paper. <laughs> so welcome this morning. It is so good to see you on this Easter Sunday morning. I want to ask if there's anyone here with a birthday. Anybody here with a birthday? Got one? Anybody else? Well, you are just very, very special. I mean, I know, know that anyway. I mean, she is the smartest young lady I know. Straight A's from the very beginning, all the way through. So Molly, happy birthday. And let's sing, ready? She is sufficiently embarrassed. We'll move on to anniversaries. Is there anybody with an anniversary today? Anybody at all? Not seeing anyone. Okay. So there are no anniversaries today, and the announcements are this. I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful Easter, and that this afternoon you get to spend it doing something you absolutely love and enjoy. Um, because Christ the Lord is risen. And we celebrate that this Sunday morning. So I'm going to ask you to practice with me, because in just a minute, Judy is going to come up and lead you in the call to worship. So why don't you stand, if you're able. If you're not able, that's okay. So I want you to, this is, kids, this is that chance where you get to use your outside voice in church, okay? So we're going to practice so that we're ready for Miss Judy, okay? We're going to be ready for you. All right, we're going to be ready. So here we go. I'm going to say Christ the Lord is risen today, and you will respond with your loudest voice. He is risen indeed, okay? Because if you mumble, we'll just have to practice more. Here we go. Christ the Lord is risen today. He is risen indeed. Uh, you guys did great. Sit back down.
home now. Um, thank you, Dick. <laughs> Sharon? So we're going to invite all of our young disciples down to the front because Sharon wants to tell you about candy again. <laughs> you talked about candy for the last three weeks at 915. And I'm just, I'm, not, I'm on vacation next week, so you, you're on your own. So everybody who's young at heart, come on down.
and that our hearts are solid. Lord, we thank you every day for the grace, the mercy, and the love that you give us. Amen. So let me just say to the mom and dad that they're not talking about you. If your child, daughter, son, or granddaughter doesn't want to go to Sunday school, wants to say, and they make a noise, please know it's okay. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. It will not bother me. It won't bother anybody else. So your cho the choice is yours. You. They are welcome to stay. Please stay with them in the second. Beautiful and so appropriate. Good morning, everybody. My name is Judy Shabala. Greetings this Easter morning. Today, Christians around the world have greeted one another with these words Christ the Lord is risen today, and they are responded to with the affirmation, he is risen indeed. Easter changes everything. Death has no more power over us. Evil is defeated. Jesus is alive. Because the Christ lives, we can live also. Let us pray together. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and open to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate our Lord's resurrection by the renewing of your spirit, arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us stand, if possible, and participate in a responsive reading. Christ the Lord has risen today. He is risen indeed. Please stand, if able, and sing hymn number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today.
invite you to join me in the Apostles' Creed. Please say with me this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Wonderful and risen Lord, we gather on this Easter Sunday to celebrate the fact that you are risen. You are risen indeed. If you be risen, that means you are Lord of all. You are Lord of life and greater even than death itself. Gracious God, we pause today to pray, giving thanks for your resurrection, but also aware that there are many who stand in need of prayer. We pray today for the people and nation of Ukraine, and we ask that peace with justice occur. We pray for places around the world where there is a lack of necessary items for life and living, sometimes even right here in our own country, for persons who do without like the homeless or the hungry or the hurting, we ask that we as your church might be an instrument to give generously and lovingly to people in need. We pray today for one another, Many of us come today with great expectation and joy, but some come having lost a loved one. And we pray that you might comfort those who grieve. Some come feeling a little under the weather. We pray for their healing. Others come confused and struggling with life. We pray for guidance and direction. And wonderful Christ, all of us come searching seeking for hope. We find that hope in the fact that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And I invite you into a time of silent prayer at this point.
And let us pray today with the confidence of the children of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, choir, you did a tremendous job on the introit. I'm not sure who sounds better, the Mockingbird or the choir, but I do have to tell you that my favorite book and favorite movie is To Kill a Mockingbird. So, you look pretty hard. We all agree? Please now hear the Bible reading for today, Luke 24, 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. 
The women were terrified and bowed their heads, faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to give them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping, looking in. He saw linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It dances every time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So I have to say the choir wins. <laughs> because they're, they're here with me every week. <laughs> Sally, you guys, you guys do great. Thank you. And Judy, thank you for your leadership and support. It's a lot of O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. So to all of you, even though I tried to catch you outside before you got in to everyone happy Easter, I am so glad that you are here at many different levels. Um, for me, church is very, very important. And I love Christmas. I really love Easter. And I think it's because of the Easter music. My sister and I were talking about the music that we have to sing on Easter, or it's just not Easter, right? Christ the Lord is risen today. He did a tremendous job of the work, and thank you so very, very much. And in just a minute, we'll sing the other one that's required, and that's Low in the Grave. Play. It's just not Easter if you don't sing those songs. I sing them poorly and loudly. <laughs> the other reason I'm happy that you're here is because for the last two years we've had this thing called COVID. The pandemic may be heard, and it has affected churches. It's affected Christmas Eve. I remember one Christmas Eve as it poured down, you could hear it all over the ceiling. There were four of us here. And that was all that could be here for safety. And we want to be responsible persons and want to treat each other well. We want everyone to be safe and healthy. But it also affected Easter. And it's just good to see. It's good to celebrate Easter. So welcome. This morning, I'd like to direct our attention to the gospel reading that Judy read so well for just a few moments. And I want you to use your imagination. Think back to what you feel that first Easter might have been like. You've been perhaps walking with Jesus as one of his followers trying to figure out and understand who he is. Maybe you've heard him say that he will go to Jerusalem and there he will be crucified and three days later he will rise from the dead. You're confused. You're not sure. It seems too good to be true. You've heard him say that he was the Messiah. God's Son sent him to this world to save us from our sin, but more than that, to give us meaning and purpose, significance in life and living, to transform and change this world. It just is too great to comprehend. And then you remember back with me to the 
events of last week to Palm Sunday as to how he entered the city amidst the cries and shouts of the crowd, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to God in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. You wanted that party just like I do to continue forever. But this past week has been very hard. Jesus was arrested. He was betrayed by one of his own disciples, Judas. Judas kissed him and they came to arrest him. And the force and strength of Jesus, the gospel tells us, was so great that the ones who came to arrest him fell back at the power of God. And then he was taken and put on trial and falsely accused and convicted. Now, the story that Judy read mentions Simon Peter. Peter is that disciple who had foot in mouth disease. I don't know if you suffer from that or not. I do on occasion. And Peter has said over and over again that he is like the super great most also disciple. Jesus, if everybody else deserts you, I will follow. And Jesus said to Peter before the cop rose three times, you will deny me. Excuse me, before the cop rose three times, you will deny me. And Judas has denied him. Peter denies him because Peter is asked in the courtyard. He followed after Jesus, but not Two hopes. Aren't you one of the disciples? Aren't you one of his followers? Aren't you one of those who believes that he is the Son of God? And each of the three times, his language in denial is more vulgar, more harsh, more mean spirited, until after the third time, he hears the cock crow. And he knows what he has done. And John's Gospel tells us that at that time, Jesus comes out of the building he is in, and his eyes and Peter's eyes lock, and I don't know what was in Peter's eyes, except for maybe total failure and humiliation and heartbreak. But I have to think that in Jesus' locked eyes, remain love. And we know that Jesus was crucified on Good Friday. And then he was buried. Now, that seemed the end of it, right? It seemed as if it was the very end of this Jesus that this one who had said, I am come as God's representative, God's Messiah, God's Son, and after three days I will rise. But folks, dead is dead, right? We don't expect people to rise from the dead. It is against all logic and thinking. It's rare. So the disciples and the women went about their unusual stuff. They wondered what would happen. They wondered what would occur. So early on the first day of the week. The actual Greek text says that it was still dark. It was in the middle of the night the women went. Maybe it was out of fear that somebody might see them, that somebody might accost them, that somebody might criticize them. We don't know why, but in the middle of the night they go to the tomb with spices to prepare the body of Jesus for its final and complete burial. See, they took the stuff with them, and if they really had been believing what he said, then they would have left the spices back home. They understood the confusion that everyone felt. And when they get to the two, what has happened? The stone is rolled away, and there are these two dazzling white persons standing there. They don't recognize them, they don't know them. We understand as readers that they're angels and that when we look at them, they are God's messengers. And the angels say 
why do you look for the Lord there? Bless you. Alone in heaven. He is not here. He is risen. Remember, we're back to that first Easter. The confusion is great. We're unaware and unsure of all that's happening. We don't know what it means. We don't understand. It's too much for us. So the women go back and tell the disciples. And fear. I love it that Luke mentions fear again here. Because what does Peter do? He gets up and runs to the grave. And he sees that the tomb is empty. All he sees are the grave cloths lying there. All the disciples go back. They're in that upper room where they're afraid of what might happen. The stories are beginning to circulate that the tomb is empty. And very right there in their midst, the risen Christ appears. You and I know that Thomas is not there. We don't know where Thomas is. We don't know why he was gone. Maybe he was doing something really, really important. Maybe he just wanted time alone. We don't know. But he, Jesus appears to the disciples and they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this one, this Jesus, has defeated them and is alive today. Thomas is still doubting. He wants evidence. He wants proof. And he says, unless I can touch the nail prints in his hand and the spear prints in his side, the spear print in his side and the nail prints in his feet, I will not believe. And then Jesus appears again to Thomas. Or again to the disciples. Excuse me. And Thomas sees him and says, My Lord and my God. And the Gospels tell us that over and over and over and over again, the resurrected Christ appears to 500 or more people, to this individual, to that individual, to two persons traveling to Emmaus. Over and over again, people see the resurrected Christ. And because you and I have met the resurrected Christ, he makes all the difference in the world. Because if Jesus Christ is risen, then he is Lord. He's not Lord of just a little bit. He's not Lord of one portion. He's not Lord for just maybe Monday through Saturday and Sunday. He is Lord of all. Christ is risen. And Jesus is Lord. And he invites us to give our full selves to him. Not in a way that he manipulates or controls us, but in a way that he allows us to be changed and transformed by his grace and life. I am sure that I am the only person in this room who has ever made a mistake or done something wrong. But his grace, because of the resurrection and death of the cross, allows our sins to be forgiven. Not just that. It's not just about getting into heaven. You know, that's a pretty good thing. It's about how we live on this earth. Because Jesus Christ is Lord, there will one day be a world where there is no more hopelessness. One day there will be a world where no one will be hungry. One day there will be a world where everybody is treated fairly and well and equally. One day, Mark my words. It will happen. Not today. But until that day comes, we live out the reality of the resurrection of Christ, and we get involved and we serve and love and care for people in the name of Christ, who is our risen Lord and Savior. And we do things that give to our lives significance and meaning. Because Christ is risen, everything is different. It can't just be about us. It's 
got to be about Jesus. So on this Easter Sunday morning, I ask you, what will you do with Jesus? Because if he has come back from the dead and we believe that he has, then we just can't ignore it. We can't say, well, that's interesting. We've got to accept it and believe it that Jesus is who he says he is. And he has said all of us. He is the very Son of God. He preached it. <laughs> Absolutely. And because Christ is risen, you and I can be different, the whole world can be different. So to you, I wish you a very happy and blessed Easter. I will tell you that this afternoon, I will take a nap. <laughs> I was very concerned about the day when I saw that there was a hail delay. The Orioles gave me last night. When do you have a hail delay? <laughs> but they didn't do anything. So <laughs> but folks, I want to conclude by saying this to you. A lot of you guys I know. Many of you are regulars here at Community Church. It's a great church. It's not a great church because I'm the pastor. I just get to come along the line. It's a great church because these folks who come every Sunday are great people. I'm convinced of that. They're the best people around. And it's a great church because it's great. And if you're looking for a church, if you're trying to find a place of worship, I would love the privilege to be your pastor. I would love the privilege to walk beside you as we journey together in understanding who this risen Christ is and how we together can live for Jesus. Because I believe that Jesus makes all things. As I said to you for almost 30 years now, the United Methodist pastor, other than playing shortstop for the Baltimore Orioles or being Perry Mason, never wanted to be anything else but. I have no regrets. I have entrusted my life to this reality. And I have the confidence to say to you that you can entrust your life to this reality as well. Dear friends, happy Easter. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. So we were having uh, a discussion about how many offering plates we needed. And we determined that it was six. So Judy, if the six offering plates are not filled, you get to fill them, okay? We'll have, we'll have, we need help then, right? Okay. All righty. I love your bunny ears. They are really cool. And it's, so let us receive at this time, let us at this time, Receive our morning tithes and offerings. Come on back. I'm going to usher, you have to smile. I know you are. Stand.
him is, as I said, up from the grave he arose, number 322. And I invite you to enjoy singing this Easter hymn. Sally, why don't you start recruiting here? <laughs> Let me just say to you again, thank you for being here this morning. To our guests, we appreciate you worshiping with us. To those who are regularly here, thank you for your faithfulness to this wonderful, wonderful church. I hope each of you has a happy and blessed Easter. Um, I have my family here, and I am so glad that they're here. I appreciate them coming. We're going to go to Dead Freddy's for dinner. <laughs> um, I would extend to you an invitation to come, particularly, where's Brooke? There's Brooke. Brooke's one of the waitresses there, one of the servers there, but she's not working today. So she's got today off, so I would invite you to come, but let us get there first and eat first, okay? But have a great day. And may God bless you, and if there's anything that I as a pastor or this church can do for you, please contact us and let us know. Let us pray together. We are sent forth in the power of Christ's resurrection. Alleluia. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.